First contacts are always exciting, but they rarely go smoothly. In Star Trek, the crew of the Enterprise continually encounters new civilizations that want to attack, assimilate, or worship it. And in reality, most first contacts have been downright disastrous. When European explorers came to the Americas, they brought novel diseases, guns, and colonialism with them, and ended up killing over 50 million Native Americans, steamrolling their cultures and stealing their land. Today, we're nearing the end of first contacts on Earth, where dense tropical rainforests are home to the last hundred or so groups of isolated peoples. The remote areas where isolated groups live are increasingly trafficked by drug runners, exploited by logging and mining companies, and invaded by missionaries, tourists, and settlers. Not only do these intrusions result in violent encounters, loss of land and resources, and alterations to the cultures and ways of life of isolated groups, they also bring diseases likely to kill over half the members of those groups. In fact, these kinds of negative outcomes have led many isolated peoples to resist further engagement with the outside world. But unlike the crew of the Enterprise with their prime directive to avoid engaging with alien civilizations unless they initiate contact, Earthlings have no consistent protocol for how to avoid or manage contact with isolated groups. Some countries have given legal recognition to these groups' right to be left alone, even creating no trespass reserves to protect them and their lands from intrusion. But those same governments haven't actually provided the funds and support necessary to enforce their policies. What's more, some governments have explicitly violated their own laws by letting energy companies drill within the reserves. All of this makes resistance seem futile. If we don't come up with some kind of plan, our history of disastrous first contacts is bound to repeat itself with each of the remaining isolated groups left on our planet. The pragmatic response would be to violate their autonomy in a less bad way by sending cultural translators and doctors ahead of the inevitable drug traffickers, loggers, and oilmen to initiate contact, inoculate people, and build long-term relationships. Or we could boldly go where no one has gone before by boldly staying away, all of us, from the places isolated peoples live until they decide to make first contact. Hey, Emily here. As a longtime fan of The Next Generation, I've thought about the ethics of first contacts before. But when our writer Alex brought us this script, it sort of occurred to me for the first time that this question of whether or not to make contact with other civilizations is relevant and important in the real world today. It also seems like there isn't really a great answer, which is why we'd love to hear what you think. Should our governments try to make controlled contacts with isolated peoples, or should they institute a sort of prime directive here on Earth? Let us know what you think in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.